there is, there is, you know, from the press and from TV, that mainly from Israel, there is much uh, anti against Poland uh, due to the Holocaust law which has passed the parliament and was signed by the president, although it was now made, uh, revised in such a way that it is not a criminal offense. And uh, by the end of June, there was an agreement between the Prime Minister of Poland and Prime Minister Netanyahu to put this to sleep and now we have to build, we have to build confidence between the Jews and the Poles. And there are some Poles who I might think still have anti-Semitic feelings, maybe not by not knowing Jews. So the people have to come together and discuss openly. Well, the story has to be, in my opinion, used for the education of the younger generation in schools. It has to be made public, broaden up in all countries. And I believe uh, that it will change the view of Jews, Israelis towards Poland eventually, over time. Well, I'm a second generation Holocaust survivor. I was born in 1941 as a Polish citizen in Switzerland. My parents fled from Germany, from Munich. They were Polish citizens all their lives, though they didn't speak Polish. And, uh, and my family went through the Holocaust. That means my father's brothers uh, were affected by the Holocaust and my father's young, second youngest brother, he was deported to concentration camps and he was a couple of years in Auschwitz Monowitz. So I know firsthand what it means to, to go under the Holocaust. But luckily I was born in Switzerland just before my parents they fled and then two years later I was born, otherwise I wouldn't be here probably. My, my parents lived in, uh, in Munich. I wasn't born at that time. And there were Polish citizens. As Polish citizens, they were foreigners. They didn't have to wear the Judenstern. And I always asked many times my father, come on, why didn't you leave Germany in 33 when the Nazis came up? He said to me, I was not so much affected. People didn't look at me as a Jew because my father was blonde, had blue eyes, and he was performing his business. And then they said, yes, it will go over, you know, the Nazis, Hitler will come down, it will be bad. And where should he go? He is Polish, he can only go back to Poland. He didn't want to go to Poland because his parents fled Poland in 1911. So they wanted to sit, in out, sit it out. And then in um, 1938, there was the first expulsion of Polish Jewish citizens from Germany. As you might know, they were arrested by the Gestapo and they were deported to, to Poland in, I think it was ben Benjin. It was in, in, in Benjin, this area, and the train stopped there and they had to wait. The Poles didn't let them in. The Germans didn't take them back. So after a couple of days, the, mm -hmm. the Polish government made an agreement with Germany because the Poles threatens 
Yes, not Benji, Zbarzin. Yeah, Benji. You want to repeat it? Zbarzin, you know about Zbarzin? So my parents were also in Zbarzin and they had to wait. They didn't know what's going to happen. And the Polish government threatened they will expulse German citizens from Poland if you don't take the Jews back. So they, they didn't want that to happen. So my parents came back. When they came back, they went back to their apartments, to their apartment, and they saw we have to leave. And they made preparations. They wanted to go to the United States. And they applied for a visa in Munich, but there was the Polish quota. They had to wait and to wait until it came to 39. Then they were able to leave actually officially. So my parents, my father got all the documents from the Gestapo that he's clean, that they can go, and that they left one week before the breakout of the war and they came to Switzerland. But they didn't want to stay in Switzerland. They wanted to go to England for preparations to go to the United States, but the war broke out and the borders were closed. So my father stayed in Switzerland with my mother, then I was born, but my father wasn't allowed to work he had to go also to camp. He was in a labor camp, my father, in Switzerland, which was not nothing compared to the Nazi camps, but it was a military guarded Swiss labor camp for Jews. There were many camps for Jews, for refugees. There were some camp, was one camp where my father was, was even kosher, but he had to work he was building a streets, you know, in the and uh, until after the war, and then he stayed in Switzerland. He still was waiting for the visa. He didn't get it, and then the Swiss said, "Okay, you can stay," and he stayed. Well, I still think there could have been more things which could have been done, but I must say that the Allies were not very helpful. When I read about Jan Karski, only a few years ago, I didn't know about it, what he had done and what he saw and he was bringing over to the United States personally to President Roosevelt, nobody listens. They didn't trust him. And it was absolutely in the hands of the Allies, especially the U.S., to stop the Holocaust. They had the means, but they didn't do it. Why didn't they do it? That's an open question. There are excuses that it was not so important. My father was very clear about it. My father said, and I quote him, my father said that the Americans, they were happy that the Nazis, the Germans, did the dirty work. That's what he said. So we have to learn about that. 